Before we get started with this video, did you know that only 48% of you watching right now are subscribed to my channel? Even if you didn't know that, who cares? Why do YouTubers obsess so much over the statistic of whether or not viewers are subscribed to their channel? Views are views, and maybe that energy should be spent productively making better content instead of trying to play a never-ending numbers game. Now that I've ultimately decimated 90% of my competition with just four sentences, I did bring that statistic up because it's specifically relevant for this video. Because this video is a retrospective for my newer audience and a time capsule for my longtime viewers. This may come as a surprise to many of you, especially those who jumped on my ever accelerating bandwagon back when my How It's Made parodies took off in 2018. But I made my YouTube account all the way back in 2006, and I've been regularly uploading videos since 2010. I'm currently sitting on a total of around 700 uploads. So then why does your channel not have 700 different videos on it? You're probably wondering. Well, it's simple. Those videos were bad. Really, really bad. So they're gone now. Okay, that's an oversimplification. I personally like my channel to be a showcase of my best work, and over the years as my talents and quality standards have evolved, I don't want my standout videos to be buried under a bunch of ones that I just don't want to feature anymore. This is especially true because the first five years of my career was mostly me wanting to be a generic let's player. Ugh. And although I was far ahead of the popularity boost in live streaming in terms of half-assedly playing video games for money with little effort, that's just not good enough for me to put on the internet these days. But as I work on larger projects and expand my scale and scope and my videos have more and more things to them before I'm happy with uploading them, I like to reminisce on a simpler time for my channel every now and then. Back when I made videos with literally no preconceived notions whatsoever, and I didn't care whether or not a video was even good. As long as I thought the idea was funny, that was going on the internet. And some of those videos... They're actually not too bad. What you're about to see are six videos from my channel's history that I'd say are... decent. They're, they're all right, they got a chuckle or two out of me. There's a joke in there that I like every now and then. Five of these videos are all posts that are at least six years old, with one dating all the way back to 2016. None of these videos ever garnered more than about 10,000 views in their lifespan, which in terms of the modern day internet and YouTube means that no human being has ever seen these before. The sixth video is the one that I think ties this whole thing together. The sixth video, I only made a month ago, and I just thought with how I've evolved into a prime being of intrigue and intellectual comedy, it didn't feel funny enough or interesting enough to upload. So I'm putting it in this video here for you all to be the judge. Should I have just put it up on the internet and said, eh, whatever, here you go, or should I have scrapped it and maybe gone back to it later when I figured out something more interesting to do with it? Either way, enjoy the clips. And just keep in mind that this stuff is old, probably not a good indicator of my modern day talents, and most likely cringeworthy to some degree. But more importantly, remember that I don't care. Enjoy!
Okay, Carlos, turn it on. Got it. What is this, Linux? Uh-oh, it stopped. How do we make it do something? You forgot the one thing all computers need to run. A crippled boy. A crippled boy? A crippled boy. When did Carlos get so handsome? Where are we gonna get one of those? Did somebody install a ramp? Crippled boy! Oh, come on, what's he gonna do? Download some new legs? <laughs> Hey there, folks. Paul Gain is here. That's right, the big G Money Anus is stepping up to sell you a fantastic product. Introducing the Works Hydro Shot. A Hydro Shot so effective, it just works. The Works Hydro Shot is self contained. It's been self priming and self pressurizing for decades now. For what you might ask, only God knows. Look at how fantastically wealthy I am. Look at all my lovely amenities you couldn't possibly afford. If you buy a Works Hydro Shot, your chances of living as well as I do will increase by 1%. It saved my marriage. It saved my marriage. It killed my marriage, but it saved my husband's. The Works Hydro Shot is made from top quality materials. And if you're in the market for a girlfriend, look no further. See all those round stainless steel bearings? Well, pucker up, Johnny. You've got a prom date tonight. Hi, I'm Chet, sponsored by The North Face. The Works Hydro Shot really turned my life around. I'm no longer a homosexual. Heaven, here I come. We weighed the Works Hydro Shot against a gallon of milk on the scales of justice. The Hydro Shot came out with a squeaky clean record, but that gallon of milk is a guilty motherfucker. Don't waste your time on degenerate dairy products. Get the Works Hydro Shot. This is a high-tech, top-quality, advanced cleaning power tool, so you might expect to pay as much as $200. But if you order today, you won't pay a penny more than $200. Here's how to order. I'm Grover Cleveland, and I became president to mess with your railroad corruptions, you rail barons! Mr. Cleveland, that's not fair. We were making so much money through the railroads! Yes! Ever so much money! Too bad. I'm placing a presidential order requiring me to dance on these tracks until all railroad corruption is finished! That's a complete misuse of your presidential power! You get off of those tracks this instant! Get off of the tracks! Get off! In the wise words of a great president before me, ask not what your country can do, but suck my dick! I'm not getting off these tracks! He's not getting off the tracks! President Mr. Cleveland, please! Nope! Not even if you paid me a reasonable sum of money. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll dance on your children's graves before I get off of these trucks. Mr. Cleveland! <laughs> Mr. Cleveland! Bless you. I don't think this is going to look very good for your re-election campaign. Well, that's perfectly fine because I think I'll look pretty great on my re-election campaign with my foot shoved straight up the rail baron's asses. He's not going to move. I think you know what we have to do. I believe I do, Frederick Von Moneysworth. I believe I do. So, President McKinley, cast any executive orders lately? No, I've never been one for executive orders. Do you feel like getting out there and stopping some corruption?
No, not particularly. I think that the nation should be able to solve its own problems. Uh, well, do you, do you think me, it... This sucks. We may have gravely misjudged our error in our ways! Yes, Frederick, but I have an idea to solve all of our problems. The Beaver Cleaver is back, baby, and he's gonna leave a great steamer on those rail barons' faces. You do that, President Cleveland. You're the one who I knew we needed in the White House this entire time. I forgot to vote! Very few things fill my heart with joy, like dancing all over a rail baron's tycoonery. In fact, the only two things I like more than that are having illegitimate children and nullifying treaties personally that would have prevented instances of worldwide genocide. What the fuck is wrong with our presidents? Well, hi, boys and girls. Look who it is. It's our old pal, Brandon Fraser. <laughs> What's that, Brandon Fraser? Oh, you do? Hey, guess what, everybody? He wants to play a game of Where's Brandon Fraser? <laughs> Alrighty, Brandon Fraser. You go hide, and we'll come look for you. <laughs> now, boys and girls, it's our job to find him. Do you think Brendan Fraser's at his house? Do you think he's on the movie studio? Or could he be relaxing at the beach? I'll give you a hint. Brendan Fraser told me he's somewhere warm, wet, and fun. <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, shampoo. The sudsy stuff that gets our hair squeaky clean. Whether you're looking for dandruff control, curl control, or color control, shampoo is just the stuff to take control of your hair just how you like it. But while lathering up your luscious locks with your cleanser of choice, have you ever stopped to think about just what's in your shampoo? Today, we're going to look at the most popular brand of shampoo in North America, Head & Shoulders, to help us finally answer the question. Do you really need to lather, rinse, and then repeat? Or is that just marketing mumbo-jumbo? The first ingredient you're going to find in any shampoo bottle is one you should be pretty dang familiar with. We're talking about ordinary water. Turns out one of the best things to help in washing your hair in the shower is more of that glorious H2O. Now we get to the good stuff. The main weapon in shampoo's arsenal across the board is sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate, in its many forms such as perith, laurel, and laureth, is a surficant, which means its job is to eliminate surface tension. This is the stuff that all shampoo brands want for two important reasons. First, it's what causes shampoo to lather up as you scrub with it, helping to remove dirt and grime from your hair. And secondly, it helps leave the shampoo oil within your hair follicles, making it easier to comb and detangle. If you're trying to fight an itchy scalp and decide to pick up a dandruff-fighting shampoo like Head & Shoulders, you're going to see it contains zinc carbonate. Head & Shoulders in particular uses parathione zinc. This little type of zinc is the main fighter against dandruff on your noggin, which it combats by slowly burning away the top layer of your skin using its acidic composition. This is why most dandruff shampoos have a warning on the label saying not to use them more than once a day, or serious skin damage and even chemical burns could occur. After that, there's lathering agents to help keep texture consistent across the board. These usually include cocomidopropyl betaine, oleic acid, ascorbic acid, cocomide, or cytyl alcohol. Shampoos with fruit scents often substitute these ingredients for natural fruit jam and jelly, making the shampoo fully edible and as delicious as it smells. Go ahead and squirt some right in your mouth next time you take a shower. We won't tell anyone. But how do you mix all these different ingredients together without them eventually separating just like your parents? Well, that's where the handy-dandy glycol disterate comes in. Originally found in semen, Head & Shoulders 
just mention this secret ingredient keeps mixture ingredients blended and suspended right where they should be. This ingredient is so secret to the Head & Shoulders formula that you can also find it in nearly every other shampoo brand on the planet. These ingredients are good and all, but how about one we can all understand, hmm? Well, how about salt? Yep, there's ordinary salt in your shampoo to help make sure the end product isn't too thin and runny. Many stupid shampoo brands will label this ingredient as sodium chloride. But when they do that, well, maybe shampoo duty is a bit too complicated for them. But what if science goes too far and makes a shampoo that's too thick? Well, that's where sodium xylenosulfonate comes in. And sodium xylenosulfonate is just the chemical name for donkey urine. Donkey urine is cheap, plentiful, safe to use, and contains a natural thinning agent. Don't let the fat cats over at Big Shampoo make an ass out of you on this one. There's donkey urine in your shampoo, like there's foreskin in your skin cream. Pure and simple. The next ingredient on the list is one that was just a bit too complicated for us to figure out, Head & Shoulders lists they put fragrance in their bottle, and we haven't the slightest idea what that could mean. Is fragrance a texturing mixture? An anti-freezing agent? A small man who lives in each bottle and pushes the shampoo out when you want some? If you're particularly ruthless, dimethicone is just the chemical for you. Dimethicone bonds to the hair when rinsed in water, keeping your luscious locks smooth and strong when you're all squeaky clean. But in China, dimethicone is given the nickname Chin Shi's Secret. Because just like the first emperor of China built the Great Wall, dimethicone builds a protective barrier on your cranium. If you ever visit your local Chinatown and tell the residents that you know Chin Shi's secret, they'll be proud to know that you've got a well-managed hair of head going on. But beware if you buy any shampoo that's sulfate-free for it bears a terrible curse, which is bad, but the shampoo might come with a free extra bottle, which is good, but that extra bottle would also be cursed, which is bad, but you get your choice of scent, which is good, but the scent comes from a shampoo that contains sodium benzoate, and that's bad. Guar hydroxypropyl tremonium chloride is a mystery chemical that modern science doesn't still truly understand. And as for palicoternium 10, well, we understand it all right, but we're not about to tell you what it is, you loser. Methyl chloroisothiazolinone, methyl isothylazolinone, and supercalifragilistic methpialidocious are all quaint little preservatives that make sure the shampoo ends up in your house just as fresh as it was in the factory. The original line in our script for this part was, it helps the medicine go down, but we're afraid of being sued. Magnesium carbonate hydroxide has a much more commonly known street name. You've probably heard of it called Chemical X, and it's just the ingredient to add if you want to create the perfect little girl. If you don't understand that, go ahead and sell all your crypto tomorrow, because you're never gonna make it. Finally, Blue 1 and Red 33 aren't actually ingredients in that shampoo bottle. It's the shampoo calling an audible for a second bottle's assistance just in case you decide to sack it at the top of the fourth quarter to force a turnover situation. Shame on you for doing shampoo dirty. You care nothing for oxymorons, do you? Methyl chloroisothylazolin. <laughs> methyl chloroisothylazolin. 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 Methyl chlo